You're watching Mom No Period by Tyler the Sign of Finance, where we talk about everything and anything that affects the mom, the soon to be mom, and the mom with a not so close future. If that interests you, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're not, you and you are returning. Hi, welcome back. Hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when we make our next post. Also, at the end of the video, if you like our content, go ahead and hit that like button. Comment, tell us what you like about the show, what you didn't really like, and what you'd like to see in the future. All right, gals. Today we're going to be talking about a very, very prominent issue when it comes to mommies who have given birth. Clogged breast ducts. It affects the breastfeeding mom and the non-breastfeeding mom all alike. Uh, it happens when um, the ducts of your breast are clogged and no milk can come through. And it is painful. I actually experienced this. Alright, so I experienced this about a month ago. Roughly around a month ago. I have successfully been breastfeeding for one year. Yay! It has been a rough journey, but I actually did it. I'm so proud of myself. Kudos to anybody who makes it past that. Um, I give you all the props. You did that. You deserve that because it is rough. It is not easy. And for those who are not able to breastfeed, no worries. It's no sweat off your shoulders. Just being a mom is difficult in and of itself. If you choose to um, get formula, that's fine as well. I actually gave my first baby formula. I was supplementing. I was breastfeeding and I was giving formula um, for about the first six months and then after that it was formula only. Um, for the first six months, even though I was breastfeeding, it wasn't much. So this was my first real, real experience breastfeeding and I am so glad that we are almost at the end of this journey. However, Towards the end, oh my gosh, when I was almost at the finish line, I did experience these clogged breast ducts and it was not great. Um, so what happened was the reason why, the main reason why I got these clogged ducts was because I was still producing a lot of milk, but my daughter kind of moved on to solids and um, therefore I was producing a lot of milk, but the demand wasn't as high and that's where the problem came in. So this happened, as I said before, roughly about a month ago, a month and a half. Um, what happens is on Sundays, I usually do a lot of housework, uh, get ready and prepared for the week. And I think the Saturday night, my daughter was super sick, so I didn't get much rest. That's another point we'll be coming back to. Um, take note of that. I didn't get much rest. Sunday, I had to do all this work. I barely pumped. I don't think I really breastfed that day. I think it was mostly solids and all the milk that I had pumped um, the previous day. Didn't really get much milk out. I went to bed. I did not pump. I did not breastfeed. I woke up that morning. I did not pump. I did not breastfeed, which I usually do. I dropped the kids to school, made my way to work, did not pump, did not breastfeed. Um, when I woke up, I did realize that my breasts were heavy and they were tender and they uh, hurt like crazy. But I actually didn't do anything about it because I was just rush, 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 rush. Another point, take care of yourself, ladies. Put yourself first or else your body's going to force you to take care of yourself. I'm just saying. Yes, yes, your kids before yourself. But take time out for yourself as well. So I got to work and I had a lot of work to do. Did not pump. Obviously, I'm not going to breastfeed because my kid is not there with me. Midday, which was lunchtime for me. So I finally sat down and I'm like, all right, finally I get to pump. Uh, another side note, I had been pumping with the electric pump for about nine months. It was really good to me for about six of those nine months. And then my milk supply came in even greater. And I don't know what happened, but it was not my best friend after that. It, was, it wasn't too great, great to me. Um, so I was breastfeeding and pumping with the electric pump. As I hit nine months, my electric pump broke. And I am really one of your cheap moms. Um, maybe not cheap, more on the thrifty side. I do not like to spend money unless it's necessary. And I'm like, oh, I only had three months left of this thing because I only wanted to breastfeed until the first year. Stop. On her first birthday. That's it. That's what I said to myself. 
So I'm like, I only have three more months. I'm not about to go out and buy another pump. I don't, I'm not planning on having any more children. I don't want to do this. This is going to be a waste of money. So I said, I'm going to pump manually. And by manually, I didn't mean going out and buying a manual pump. I mean, these became my best friends. Yes, I manually pumped. Um, and it was great for me. I actually got more out of my breasts than what what I did with the electric pump. So usually it was like showers of blessing. But this day when I tried to pump after such a long period of not pumping, not breastfeeding, I didn't even get a trickle. And this worried me because this had never happened. So this worried me, but I had to get back to work. And I made it my business to make sure I got work done at work. So I was like, you know what? I'll take a break. I'll get back to this. When Back to uh, finish my work, um, drove home, breast aching. By the time I got home, they were like rocks, literally like rocks. I showed them to my husband and he was like, You know, he could actually see my veins. Um, it looked like I, I packed my breast with cement. It was crazy. So I did some research and the main thing that I saw was warm compress. So I'm like, okay, let me go get uh, a hot pack and put it on my breast. Um, it did feel a little better. And because I was getting some type of relief, I had them on my breast for a very, very long time. I don't know, let's say I put it on my breast around six um try to get a little milk out and i did get did get a little bit milk out probably about five milliliters which is still not a lot but it was still something and then i put the the hot pack back on and i kept putting it on consistently till about 11 o'clock and i tried to squeeze and then nothing i did not get any milk an acquaintance of mine i um I hit her up on facebook now i hadn't sp spoken to this girl since my freshman year of high school I graduated in 2010, so do the math. Um, yeah, I hadn't spoken to her since my freshman year of high school, but she was a mom, um, and she was breastfeeding, I knew that, and she's a nurse. So I'm like, okay, definitely she'll know what to do. So I hit her up, and I explained to her what was going on, and I let her know that I was really desperate if she had any tips, and she responded to me rather quickly. Thank you, by the way, for responding to me, Ruby. If you do see this um, video, Thank you, I really appreciate you, and I think you're doing a wonderful job as a mom. Yeah, so she did respond to me. She gave me a couple tips. Um, the two that stood out were that um, I should do warm compress, which I was already doing, and then I should get 4,800 milligrams of lecithin. than um, she learned that from her mommy group, and she said that usually it works. So I looked it up, I did my own research, and a lot of reviews came back that people used it um, and successfully got rid of the clogged ducts. So I was so eager to try it. I'm like, yes, tomorrow I'm going to go to the pharmacy and I'm going to get this. I went to Walgreens by my job. They didn't have it. I went to Publix. If you don't know what Publix is, it's a supermarket but it does have a ph pharmacy as well. They did not have it. I called Walgreens by my house. They did not have it. I called CVS they didn't, by my house. They did not have it. I called Walmart, but you already know how Walmart is. You never get through, at least the ones down here. So that didn't work out either, and I was about to cry because I didn't know what else to do, and I needed to get this milk out. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you guys. So that morning that I did wake up, I did try to breastfeed, um, and she did get some, but you re I did realize she had to work a lot harder to get milk out. Um, so sorry, baby. But it did provide some relief. I'm not sure how much she got up, but she got up some. So I tried to do some more research. All I saw was one compress, one compress. Tried to do that throughout the day. When I got home, I decided to call my um, daughter's pediatrician. And she recommended that I do the one compress. But she said, how? And I told her I was doing the one compress. She said, how long are you doing it for? And I'm like, I've been doing it. I don't even know how long I've been doing it. But I've been putting it for hours at a time. And she's like, 
20 minutes, one compress, take a break, cold compress. One compress, cold compress, but don't do one compress straight because you're just going to inflame the ducts. Did not know that, so I was doing myself a disservice. So she said, also, I'm going to recommend the Colombian method. I'm like, what is the Colombian method? She's like, well, girl, I'm from Colombia, and this is what we usually do. It's usually a quick fix. You put half, um, get a bucket, put half cold water and half ice, add salt, and just dunk your boob in it. And I'm just like, and she's like, no, I'm, I'm serious. And everybody who knows me knows I hate the cold. The cold and me do not mix. So when my husband heard this, he's like, are you going to do this? I'm like, yeah, with your help. So he was there. He supported me. And we did do that. So I did the warm compress. Um, and I did the Colombian method. And I did that about four times. And then she also recommended that um, right before I breastfeed, I do the warm compress, of course. And then while I'm doing the warm compress, try to breastfeed. But don't. I usually um, breastfeed with the baby like this. I'm going to show you. She looks a little crazy. But I usually um, breastfeed like this or lay down and have her in the sideline position. But she recommended that I lay the baby and I hover I'm sorry, over her. I don't really want to get up, but you get the picture. Hover over her to breastfeed. I guess the gravity is supposed to help the milk come down and massage as I breastfeed or do a warm compress at the same time. So I did all these things throughout the night, throughout the morning, and um, when I woke up in the morning, my breasts had relief and I continued to do that for the rest of the week. By the end of the week, I was completely fine. The, my daughter's doctor told me that if it hadn't gone down, I would have had to end up going to the hospital because um, having a clogged, duct, a, duct, a clogged duct for an extended period of time can actually cause an infection in the breast. I really, really wanted to prevent getting an infection and also wanted to ease the pain. So let me just go over four main tips just in case I didn't already say it or if I already said some of them just to re-emphasize them. If you have clogged ducts, first thing first, don't overexert yourself. I was extremely exhausted, which didn't help my situation. I mean, it didn't cause the situation, but it certainly did not help the situation. If you have a clogged duct, it probably mean you probably might need to take a whole day off, stay home with baby, breastfeed, take it easy. So definitely do not overexert yourself, rest. The second thing is warm compress, cold compress. You could probably even implement the Colombian method. Warm compress, not more than 20 minutes. Warm compress helps to loosen the ducts and help the, the milk going and the milk flowing. And the cold compress helps to decrease the inflammation and the swelling. Definitely breastfeed, 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 pump, 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 breastfeed, breastfeed. Even if you feel like you're not getting much, definitely go ahead and do those. Implement the hovering method um, as far as breastfeeding and this will help. It works in wonders. And four, massage, massage, massage. Definitely do that. If you want to get your husband or your significant other involved, go ahead and do so. It works wonders. So that's the end of my story time for today. Also, I know breastfeeding is a little rough and it is sometimes tedious. And anything that I could get, any type of tip that I could get while I was breastfeeding, I wanted to know them. So I'm going to do a breastfeeding 101 video, which I will drop either later this week or early next week. If you are interested in that, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button so you will be alerted when I do post this video. Alrighty? Thank you. This week's product is actually a movie. Now, before I even give you the title of this movie, I had my reservations about it. When I saw the trailer on TV, I thought it was going to be very predictable. I didn't want to waste my money. So I didn't go see it in theaters. However, this past weekend, I visited Redbox for my weekly movie and I could not find anything. So I chose this movie. And boy, was I in for a surprise. This movie is Kidnap. Kidnap starring Halle Berry. 
it was great. Yes, it was predictable in some areas, but it definitely had twists that I was not, that I was not expecting. <laughs> that I was not expecting at all. Um, it speaks or it portrays a mom who, I don't want to give too much detail. Um, I guess we kind of already figured what it was about, but just to let you know, it has many twists. Um, it is action filled and definitely filled with suspense. Emotional and extremely realistic. Before this movie, I always thought that I knew exactly what I would do if my kid was kidnapped. After this movie, I'm not really sure what I would do, but I do know this. It did open up conversation in my household um, to discuss things that we should probably, or procedures that we should probably put in place to prevent or maybe um, lessen the likelihood of this taking place because you can't always prevent every single thing but you can um, lessen its likelihood and so that conversation was held in my my family as well as we're still trying to come up with a process or a procedure that we would go through in case this actually does take place also I did watch it with my four-year-old oh, don't judge me it did have curse words but it wasn't a lot and it was predictable in a sense I could tell when the curse words were coming so we quickly turned it down but I had her watch it so she was aware of what this crazy world really is all about um, one of the major themes in the movie was about obedience and I think this movie really really captured her attention we did have a conversation about it after and I did explain to her you know um, this is another reason not the main reason but this is another reason why you have to listen and pay attention when daddy and mommy tell you or give you instructions and also that you need to be aware of your surroundings don't just exist and be lollygagging all over the place when you especially when you go out with mommy and daddy but be aware of your surroundings and the second thing is, is not to talk to strangers if any stranger comes up to you that mommy and daddy didn't introduce you to or uh, mommy and daddy didn't say it's okay for you to go with don't go with them speak loudly scream loudly if you feel unsafe or even if you don't feel unsafe um capture people's attention that are around you rather so that they can see where you are and the person is less likely to try to take you away so this is definitely once again a conversation opener um definitely something that the family can watch as i said before it does have curse words it's up to you you're, but I do think that it is a good movie for at least the parents to watch or any caretaker or anybody who's ever been in charge of a child definitely watch this this movie as you're watching this movie definitely or if you already did watch this movie go ahead and comment and tell us what your reaction was um this movie is also available at walmart and target definitely happened there i think it was on netflix at one point but it is on redbox so if you do not want to purchase the movie but you don't mind renting it for a night definitely do a redbox it's only a dollar and a little bit of change and there are some codes online where you can probably get it for less or for free You can also watch it on Vulu. It's for a dollar fifty. It's a for a dollar and fifty cents on Redbox. So definitely, if you can catch it this weekend, go ahead and watch it, and let me know what you think. All right, time for email of the week. All right, so now it's time for email of the week. Hey, Allie. Hey, girl. I just gave birth to a healthy baby boy two weeks ago. Before pregnancy, my sex life was great. Good for you. My husband and I had sex at least four times a week. When I initially got pregnant, it decreased to about twice per week. But by the third trimester, it was back to normal. After birth, the doc advised against having sex for six weeks and until we met for a postpartum checkup. It's, all, it's only been two weeks since birth, but my hubby really wants to have some intimate time with me. Mm. 
Is it okay to just give in but take it slow, nice and easy? What do you think? What do I think? I think you should keep your legs closed. Yes. I think you should keep your legs closed until you see your doctor for your postpartum mm. examination. Your body needs time to recuperate. It has just gone through a traumatic experience and it needs to heal. So seeing that this is your husband and seeing that, that you already have had a child, I know you know other ways to help with his tension and alleviate any pent up <clears throat> that he has inside there. Use other muscles. But ultimately, you need to have a conversation with him. Even if it's something that you want to do, this is something that is not great for your body. Also, the third thing that I meant to mention is that during this time, your fertility has actually increased. So unless you want to get pregnant right away, that's also not a good idea. Altogether, it's, it's really not a good decision to have sex right after you have given birth. Let him know how you feel. Let him know the reasons um, why it's not a good idea. Uh, and he should understand. He's your husband. He should be your best friend. He should be your support, which I'm sure he is. So he shouldn't have any problem understanding this situation. Just talk to him. Let him know how you feel. And what the world again, my name is Ali G and you are watching um, No Period, our title does not define us. If you enjoyed tonight's video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button, comment and tell us what you enjoyed about our program. If you enjoyed tonight's video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button, comment and tell us what you enjoyed about our program, what you like to see, what you didn't like, what you like to see more of. Alrighty, thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.